Okay, remember fraction multiplication, multiply straight across. No common denominator is needed at all. Trying to get one um, often leads to errors for one, but it also often leads to, if there are no errors, it often leads to much, much bigger uh, work, very large denominators. Just multiply straight across. Like, just take a look at how this looks, right? See how the numerator is just AC and the denominator is BD? Do not cross multiply. No common denominator, just multiply straight across. Uh, however, the, I think the reason people think about common denominator, it, it, it's not for the fraction multiplication rule. It is a requirement for the fraction addition rule. You do need a common denominator there. Okay, um, and that's given away in how the formula is, how the true formula is written, because both of the fractions on the left have the same variable in the denominator. They're both C's there. So common error when multiplying fractions, um, people say things like 2 sevenths times 3 sevenths uh, equals you know, 5 sevenths. I've seen that. I've seen 6 sevenths. It's not correct. Um, that's making up a fraction multiplication rule that's meant to mimic the fraction addition rule. Okay, this is a common error, uh, mixing how fraction multiplication and fraction addition how those rules look. So for multiplying fractions, please don't bother spending any extra time with common denominators. In fact, it leads to errors that I, I wish to actually not show exactly what those errors look like, just uh, for fear of people committing those errors. So just really just multiply straight across. Take a look right here. The, the formula is just saying, look, that first denominator B, stick it there. The second denominator was D. Just write it right there. Just write the things next to each other. That's your fraction multiplication rule. Okay, just recall that um, the fraction addition rule is true because eating A slices from a pizza with C total slices and then eating B slices of pizza from another pizza that has C total slices is the same amount of food as if you just started with eating A plus B slices from a pizza with C slices. Okay, just as review, um, 5, 6 plus 4 ninths, the LCM is 18. Uh, so looking at the denominators 6 and 9, the LCM is 18. We can rewrite both fractions to have a denominator of 18. Please be careful um, in, in the writing of these things. So the first fraction, 5, 6, we're going to multiply top and bottom by 3. The second fraction has a denominator of 9. So we'll only need to multiply the top and bottom by 2. So let's be very, very careful with the, with the notation. Be sure to write the times 3 on top and on bottom of the 5, 6. Please write the times two both on top and on bottom of the four ninths. This is required because if you only write one of the, the, you just write a times three like off to the side, that actually has a different meaning in mathematics. Okay, so we have 15 eighteenths plus eight eighteenths. Um, I'm just being very literal with applying the rule right now, so I didn't even bother simplifying 15 plus 18, but you'll end up with 23 eighteenths and don't worry about mixed fractions. Okay, uh, factoring the denominators, by the way, Factoring denominators will help you see, see the LCM better. Um, so here's a second approach to the answer. Um, let's say you don't quite compute the LCM off to the side first. You can um, rewrite the 6 in the denominator of the first fraction as a 2 times 3. Write the 3, which is the denominator of the second fraction, as 3 times 3. Okay, this is leading into the way we're about to look at fractions. So, so just stick with this. It seems a little strange to re-answer the same question. I get it. But the first fraction has a 2 and a 3 in the denominator. The second fraction has a factor of 3 and another factor of 3 in the denominator. So the first fraction, look, the second fraction has like a, a second factor of 3 that the first fraction doesn't in the denominator. So we're going to need to multiply by a 3 in the denominator, meaning we have to do that on top. So that's why we multiply by 3 on top and bottom. The second fraction doesn't have a 2 in the denominator, so we'll need to multiply by a 2 on top and bottom. right? So it looks a little messier to do it this way. Yeah, I get it, but it's going to work better for what we're about to look at. Okay, The whole point is factoring denominators will allow you to see what the LCM is better. For fractions with just plain numbers, maybe you're saying this is a little overkill and you don't have to do it, and I get that, but this process that works here for fractions with numbers is going to work great for fractions with variables as well, right? So it's, it's, it is really, to be honest, uh, for the type of problem we're looking at, going to be easier to, to follow this method. So I just wanted to show this method on fractions with just plain numbers. Okay, the same technique as we're just doing here, even if it's strange to do it this way for this type of fraction problem, applies to fractions with variables. So let's take a look. We'll simplify 3 over x squared minus 16 plus x over x squared minus 5x plus 4. What's the LCM? 
uh, staring at it like this? I don't know. What we need to do is rewrite this, right? So let's factor. So just like here, the 6 is rewritten. It's factored as 2 times 3. And the 9 was factored as 3 times 3. It's going to be super helpful to rewrite x squared minus 16 as x plus 4 times x minus 4. Take a look at this. The, the second denominator was x squared minus 5x plus 4. And that, that will factor as x minus 4 times x minus 1. And so look, look at the, the similarities here that both uh, fractions have an x minus 4 factor, but the first fraction is missing an x minus 1 factor in the denominator. The second fraction is missing an x plus 4 factor in the denominator. So we'll have to multiply top and bottom by appropriate things. For the first fraction, multiply top and bottom by x minus 1. For the second fraction, multiply top and bottom by x plus 4. And now both fractions in the denominator have... Uh, they're the same. I mean, they look a little different here just because of the order, but if we juggle them around, there's an x plus 4 here for the first fraction, here for the second fraction. There's an x minus 4 here for the first fraction, here for the second fraction. And there's an x minus 1 factor here for the first fraction, there for the second fraction. So look, we're about to add fractions. It's a good thing now they have the same denominator, right? This is this really makes it so it's a, not a lot of work, and the process here is meant to copy the process you see at the top where you have those fractions with just plain numbers. Okay, fractions with common denominator. Let's stick this all into one big fraction, right? So uh, numerator plus numerator, that's just how the fraction addition rule works. And at this point, we can uh, see if anything will simplify for us. So let's distribute a three uh, to the first, t to x and to minus one. Let's distribute an x to an x and a four. And we can do some collecting like terms on top. Um, and I guess if you want, uh, distribute in the denominator as well but nothing else is going to cancel now that we have terms and we are done with this one here's another one 5x minus 1 over x squared plus 3x then added to another fraction x plus 6 over x plus 3 just first of all um, in the second fraction the x's don't cancel uh, by the way, 6 over 3 doesn't magically cancel to a 2 either. There's no cancellations in that second fraction because of the plus signs. right? You need factors to cancel. So what should we do? Let's factor the denominators. Um, the second fraction is just an x plus 3. So the whole thing is a factor, x plus 3, and will not further factor. Uh, for the first fraction, you can factor out an x and have x times the quantity x plus 3. Now we'll see. Um... Well, both fractions have an x plus 3 factor in the denominator, but the second fraction is missing an x factor. So we'll take the second fraction and multiply by x on top and bottom. We didn't modify the first fraction at all, right? Just the second fraction multiplied by x on top and bottom. Now that the two fractions have the same denominator, stick them all together in one fraction, right? Numerator plus numerator, all over one copy of the denominator. Let's see here. Um, we can drop the initial set of parentheses around the 5x minus 1, distribute x, um, and you'll have x squared plus 6x. And let's see, nothing's going to cancel um, because, again, all these plus and minus signs, you can't cancel something on top and on bottom. I guess we can do a little bit of collecting of like terms in the numerator, and that's about it. So x squared plus 11x minus 1 over x squared plus 3x. It's super tempting to try to cancel the x squared on top and bottom, but the plus signs are going to prevent that. Okay, um, just, it was said earlier, but just in case somebody has downloaded the slides only, in the f second fraction, uh, in, the, in the original question, um, x plus 6 over x plus 3, neither the x's nor the 3's cancel. They're not factors. Okay, let's try this one. Um, x over x plus 4, uh, then minus the fraction x squared plus 2x over x plus 4 quantity squared. Well, Look, there's no need to rewrite the second fraction. The second fraction has two copies of the x plus 4 factor. The, the, the first fraction just needs, it already has one x plus 4 factor. It just needs a second one. So we'll multiply by x plus 4 on top and bottom. Now that there's a common denominator, stick these all together. The parentheses that you're seeing are required, especially right after the minus sign. So minus and then quantity here, x squared minus 2x. Now we can distribute in the numerator. So distribute the x and you have x squared plus 4x. Distribute the negative 1 to positive x squared and you get negative x squared. Distribute the negative 1 to a positive 2x and you get negative 2x. This is all over x plus 4 quantity squared. And so you have 2x over x squared plus 8x plus 16. Interactive question. What would have been the incorrect final answer if there were no parentheses right over here around x squared plus 2x? 
in that first step that has a single fraction. 